Okay, let's just go ahead and fix this just a little bit. Looking better, looking better. Oh, what kind of shade are you? Hmm, what did I do there? Don't try new things when you're gonna film. Not the best color for that finger. So how are my favorite humans today? You know why you're my favorites? Because you watch me. So it puts you at the top of the list. I'm very easy, very easy going. That's all it takes. Just watch me and you're suddenly my favorite human. Okay, all right. So welcome to another episode of Meflix Midnight, Midnight, Midnight Makeover. Midnight, Midnight. What is Meflix, you may say? Well, let me tell you. Thank you for asking. Maybe you didn't ask, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Meflix is me talking to you guys about a binge-worthy, okay, not just any, but a binge-worthy Netflix show. Yes, so I go and I pick a show out. I watch it if I can get through the whole season, you know, like I want to still watch it like it's got my attention, then I'm going to share it with you. That's right. I'm not going to share with you just anything. It's going to be good. Okay. That's the whole point of this to give you good info and options of what you can watch on Netflix. And I also do this and tell you the storyline while I do my makeup. That's right. Because we all do that nowadays. We tell stories and do makeup. That's the deal. That's how it is. And that's what we're doing. So if you like that, please subscribe. Yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the little bell next to it if you want to. That should let you know when these come up again. And if you don't want to hit the bell, just graze by it, okay? And then the subscribe button. That's the one that really, really matters. So today's Netflix show that I chose to review for you guys is a pretty good one. I know, I say that all the time. But come on, have you seen my last three? They were all good. Lucifer, you, clickbait. So yeah, but it is. It's awesome. It's called The Last Kingdom. Have you seen it? Have you heard of it? Please tell me you haven't. If you have, watch this anyway. And it's very witty. It is a very witty, interesting, warrior-like movie. Yeah. Just imagine kind of like you get old school Robin Hood, you know, the one with Kevin Costner, not the new ones, and mix that with a toned down kind of Game of Thrones, and then mix that with like King Arthur Merlin type of, type of movie. So it's all that smushed together. And it created this one, The Last Kingdom got like vikings and kings and queens and everybody wants to be somebody so you gotta sit tight okay sit tight go get you some popcorn get you some some gatorade I, I don't know red bull what do you guys drink nowadays i drink matcha tea okay that's what i do so this show has some great actors okay it's got for one the main actor who is utrid okay his name is alexander draymond okay he plays utrid he is the main guy he is like above and beyond like the best warrior in the world. I mean, it's like debatable, but we're not gonna debate it right now. Then we have a great supporting actress who plays like his best friend for a good portion of the show. And her name is Emily Cox and she plays as Brita. So yeah, you gotta look forward to watching her. She's a doozy, that's all I'm gonna say. And then we also have Ian Hart who plays Father Bioka and he's pretty funny. I mean, you have to listen to the show and like absorb the things that he says. It's a pretty witty show, you guys. Uh, last but not least, another supporting actor that we will mention right now is David Dawson, and he plays as King Alfred. And that's even more amazing because he's not supposed to be king, but he ends up being king anyway. So good for you, good for you, David. All right, now don't forget, I don't give you guys every single detail because if not, we'll be here for like 15 hours. We don't, we don't have that kind of time around here. Let's go ahead and get into The Last Kingdom. Are you ready? Okay. The background for this show is all about, you know, bravery, loyalty, deception, treachery, betrayal, and losing your things. Okay, you lose your things quite often and you got to go get them back. Basically, in a nutshell, this young boy, he gets everything taken from him. He has to start anew, all right? And then again, he gets everything taken from him for the second time. So the story setting is in 980, all right? And you have like your royalty, you know, like your noblemen, your eldermen, and then you have your kings and queens and all that. So we do have a nobleman whose name is Uhtred, and he's off on a beach, and he's uh, just kind of like, you know, scattering around with his family. And his son, whose name is Osbert, notices there's some ships coming in the sea. And he looks off ahead and he's like, Father, look, there's some ships coming. All of a sudden, you know, Lord Uhtred looks over and he's like, okay, that's it. We're packing it up. Time to go. 
And his son's like, what's wrong? What's going on? Aren't they fishermen or whatever, you know? And he's like, no, those are the Danes, you know, Vikings. And they're coming to take everything. That's what they do. They like raid your land and they just take all your stuff. And in the process, they kind of kill everybody. That's what they do. That's It's fun. It's a good time. Lord Uhtred sends his eldest son, whose name is Uhtred also. Okay, Uhtred, son of Uhtred and Uhtred. They're everywhere. And so he says, hey, you know what? Go check this out. Don't fight with them. Just go kind of be a spy and check out and see what they're doing, like where they land. He just wants you to kind of like look and spy and see what's up. Okay. And then at the same time, you've got the youngest one who's talking to the priest, you know, which is Father Bioka. And he's just chit-chatting and trying to find out what's going on, right? Really fast, the season just takes off because here comes a horse riding up to the little kingdom area. And he sees it's his son's horse. And he's like, oh, look, it's Uhtred, you know, son of Uhtred. It's his horse. Like, that's, is that him on the horse? It don't look like him. It looks, it looks like, like someone else. Well, yeah, they stole your son's horse and your son's head because they just removed it from his body. I know it's brutal. It's a brutal show. Okay. It's Vikings and, and Danes and, and kingdoms and land. I mean, it's when it's land, you know, it's, there's always going to be some fighting going on. Okay. And they took his head. Young Osbert sees that his brother has gotten murdered. No better way to say it. He's gotten murdered and they just kind of like drop his, what's left of him. So now Lord Uhtred is forced to go into battle like immediately like you know by the next morning you know he's got to go do this because they just they just killed his son obviously you've got to you know take revenge for that right hello so he tells his youngest son osbert he says you know what you're utrid now and osbert's like no utrid just got his head taken off i'm i'm osbert he's like no you're utrid now okay so you're utrid son of utrid who is me not brother of utrid anymore that utrid's gone now you're utrid did that make any sense whatsoever? Watch the show. You'll understand. So the father tells him, you're going to stay here with your uncle Alfred, okay? And I'm going to go avenge your brother and try to keep these Danes off of our land. So you stay here because you're my heir. Like, this is all yours now. He's only like nine or ten because like he wants to be a warrior immediately. He's like, I want to go fight. I want to avenge my brother. And the dad's like, no, man. Like, dude, you're fucking nine. Just relax. So the dad goes into battle and of course, young Uhtred, you know, does not want to listen. Uh, obviously, he's not going to just stay behind. He gets a sword. He gets his his shield. He even takes a horse. Where do you get a horse from? I have no idea, but he got one. So he kind of rides off into the wind and his dad doesn't even know that he's behind him. And while the dad is fighting with his army, young Uhtred is off to the side kind of watching, you know, in the in the forest wood area. And then he starts seeing that these Danes, they don't play fair. <laughs> No, no, no. They cheat because they were there to fight, but yet they had a separate army off to the side that kind of came in and ambushed and slaughtered Lord Uhtred and all of his men. Yeah, young Uhtred, he has his little shield and he has a sword and he's ready to fight and he starts freaking out. He's like, no, there's no way you killed my dad. There's no way. He runs out there. He takes to the field. He just shows the most bravery that you would ever see a nine-year-old do. And he goes to attack the main guy, okay, the main guy, Ragnar. And he wants to just kill him because he killed his dad. And what does Ragnar do? Ragnar turns around and pops him in the head. He just clocks him one time. And then, you know, Uhtred falls back, young Uhtred, okay? He falls back. And he's like, nope, I'm going to get up and I'm going to still fight again. I would be freaking the hell out. I would have been panicked, fell to the floor, and stayed there. But Uhtred does not. He's a warrior at heart. And he gets up with his little sword again. And he goes to stab Ragnar. Ragnar is like, okay, now you're now you're pissing me off. So I could either slice you in half like I just did to your dad, or I could just knock you out again. So he does. He just clocks him one more time. This time hits him hard enough to where he passes out. So what does he do? He takes Uhtred as a prisoner. And that's where his life starts all over again. His father's been murdered. His uncle's an a-hole. We're gonna find that out later. Uhtred has been taken as a slave and he has to live with Danes now. So they keep Uhtred and another girl who's from another Saxon family. You know, they're Saxons. You know, that's what they are. Did I, did I mention that earlier? Let me mention it right now. They're Saxons and Danes are Vikings. Okay. So this other girl, her name is Brita and her family, I guess, got slaughtered in some fight somewhere else. And they decided to keep her. The Danes decided to keep her. So they have both of these kids now, you know, and it's like, why? 
I don't know. They just want to adopt kids all of a sudden. And they're both about the same age and they have to grow up with them and they have no choice because they are their slaves. So what happens is Ragnar, who is the Dane that captured them, uh, his kids, who is young Ragnar, nobody in this show can have their own name. Everybody has to be a junior, junior the third, junior the fourth. It's like you hear one name and then you hear it four more times. Just had to fill you in with that. So Ragnar and his son Ragnar, the younger, uh, he decides that he's going to befriend Uhtred as his brother. Um, obviously because they're living with him. So they kind of show you this, you know, other side instead of just looking at it from the Saxon side. Now you're looking at it from the Dane side. So you kind of get a little a little taste of both ways of life. You know what I'm saying? So Uhtred being a slave is always treated, of course, differently, but he's still allowed to play with Ragnar's daughter. Um, once again, Ragnar is the one that captured him. And his daughter's name is Tira. And while they're playing one day in the forest, here come these little bandit kind of kids, you know. Um, they're part of Ragnar's clan. How do you say? Like, you know, this kid, his father's part of his clan. But this kid has, like, bad intentions. And he kind of wants to hurt Tira. But only because he likes her. But it's like a freaky, creepy kind of like her, you know. So what does he do? He goes and, like, rips her shirt. Uchi defends her. And he beats up the kid. Well, he doesn't say this right away to the dad. He's just like kind of beat up. And the dad, Ragnar, is like, hey, are you fighting again? Like, you know, you're not supposed to be fighting all the time. That's that's a lot of talk coming from a Dane who just killed his father. I'm just saying. So Uchid's like, yeah, I was fighting. But, you know, he didn't say for what. He never like puts himself in the forefront. He kind of just, he takes the heat for a lot of stuff. Well, his daughter, thankfully, speaks up. And she's like, no, it wasn't Uchid's fault. He fought with Sven because... He tore my blouse, you know, and Uchi was defending me. So you wouldn't believe, but this one situation that Uchi beats up this kid, Sven, him doing that ends up being like the entire backdrop for what this whole season is about. Well, the father of that little boy is one of Ragnar's men. Like they're all like in this, you know, Dane Viking kind of clan, right? So he goes to talk to me, says, hey, I need to talk to your son. Your son was like, you know, trying to look at my daughter well he didn't try he looked at my daughter's nakedness you know and so the father's like no you know me you know i i serve you you know just leave him alone just a boy and he's like no uh, -uh. we don't roll like that okay bring him out here goes ahead and you know pulls the kid and you know says oh you want to see my daughter's nakedness huh well let me help you see no more and you know takes his eye that's what he did they're brutal i'm telling you so he tells the dad of that boy he says you are no longer part of my crew you're banished Goodbye, take your things, take your pervy son with you. So this puts Uhtred into the good graces of Ragnar, finally. And they're able to kind of live happily ever after. So you would think, right? Of course, we're not going to be happily ever after. We have a whole season to go. And what happens next? Well, you're never going to believe it. Years and years go by and Uhtred is quite older. You know, he banished that one guy. I mean, he didn't just go quietly. His name was Kjotun and his son Sven. He got some reinforcements and they all went and attacked Ragnar, the guy that banished him. So they set the whole place on fire and Ragnar dies in this fire. And the only people that survive is Uhtred and Brita because they were off in the woods somewhere because Ragnar told them to go. He's like, hey, you know what? Go have some fun. Go play. You're 20 years old. Go play. And when they come back, they see that everything is caught fire. They see that there's been destruction and they're freaking the out. Yet again, Uhtred has lost another family, right, that he has grown to love. He doesn't even know where young Ragnar is because he went off to fight somewhere else, okay? So he didn't get killed. And Tura, the sister, she didn't get killed, but she's been taken prisoner. But he does not know that. Uhtred tells Brita, we've got to do something about this. Like, we have to. We can't let these people ransack our town, murder our family that we've grown to love, and get away with it. And he says, okay, we're going to go find the main dude. His name is Abba. And he was the best friend to Ragnar. And we're going to let him know what just took place here. Like what happened with this massacre here. Well, when he goes to do that, Abba doesn't believe him. Because obviously he's like, you're a traitor. First you were a Saxon. Then we kidnapped you. Then you became a Dane. And you probably just got mad and just killed everybody because you felt like it. And uh, Uhtred's like, really? You think that's what I did? Uhtred tells Brita, let's go find refuge in Wessex. You know, let's get far away from the Danes because they want to kill us. Yeah, they think that we murdered their family and we did not, but they think we did. 
So let's get the hell away from them. So we're going to go to the Saxon town. Okay, so we're going from Danes to Saxons again. It's kind of a back and forth kind of deal. And he says, we're going to try to find some, some peace there in Wessex. And lo and behold, when we get there, I guess who's there? A Father Bielka. Yes, the one that was you know, the priest to his dad. He's there. So he is now the priest to the new king that is of Wessex. So he sees Uhtred and all of a sudden, Father Bielka is just way too happy. You know, he's like, oh my gosh, I know this young man from when he was a boy. The thing is that Uhtred does not look the way he did when he was a boy. He looks like a Dane. So obviously the king there is not happy about it. He's like, you know what? I don't trust this guy just because you knew him when he was a boy doesn't mean that you know him now. Well, they kind of give him some hell about it, you know, and Uhtred is forever and ever trying to prove himself. I mean, that's all this guy does throughout the whole entire season. Right away, Father Bioka has, you know, taken Uhtred in and just kind of really happy to see him again, you know. And Brita is getting a little jealous because she's like, you know what? We are not Saxons anymore, all right? That's when we were younger. That is gone. We are Danes. Even if the Danes are mad at us, we're still Danes. Like, what are we doing here? So she has this type of kind of like bitterness. Brita's a little bitter. The sad thing is the King of Wessex ends up dying and the heir that is rightfully supposed to be the new king is just, just incompetent. Okay, he's like a young dumbass. I don't have a better way to say it. I'm sorry, he just, he just, it's not right up here. Like he's just not king worthy, okay? So they named Alfred the king, okay? And Alfred seems to be somewhat very strong-minded about having England be one united England. And the way he's going to do this is by gaining Uhtred's knowledge of how the Danes work. So Uhtred is faced with, you know, somewhat going against his morals because he doesn't want to go against the Danes because they're like, you know, technically like his family. But he also is afraid of them right now because they're trying to hunt him down. So what do you do? What is a guy to do? I don't know, but he does what he can to stay alive. During this time that they're in Wessex, Brita has had it. She's like, you know what? I can't take it. I don't like living here. This is not me. I'm betraying my own kind. And she wants to leave. So Uhtred's like, you know what? If you want to leave, I understand. You know, we can still be friends, you know? Go ahead and, and live your life. I'm not going to tell you what to do. And it's kind of like sad in a way because they were somewhat boyfriend and girlfriend. They were kind of like shagging a little bit. They do end up meeting up with young Ragnar, the one that lost his dad. And he confronts Uhtred and he says, hey, you know what? Did you do it? Was it you? Everyone says it was you. And he's like, well, do you really think that I would kill our father? Do you really think that low of me? And young Ragnar is like, no, I didn't think you did it. So like they kind of hug it out or whatever. But uh, Uhtred says, I can't help you avenge them right now, but I will and I shall. But not right now, because right now I have other things to attend to because this king kind of has me like by the balls. He didn't say that. But that's kind of like how he has him. Anyway, uh, Ragnar is like, okay, that's fine. Well, I'll just take Brita with me and we'll just be on our way. So you don't see Brita for a while. And she becomes quite the warrior. Uh, she really does fight quite a bit. And they kind of do ransack a few places together, you know. But that's just, that's where her path led her. So Uhtred has to go back to King Alfred. I mean, you'll find that he helps his king do everything. He, he really does. And the king's wife is is such a bitch. I mean, you just, you love to hate her. Okay, her name's Ellsworth, and she's always thinking that Uhtred is out to do something bad. When he's not, he's saving everybody all the time. I mean, he's giving you all the knowledge. He's telling you how to defeat the Danes. He's just always, he's even fighting for them. He's always doing the right thing. And this wicked woman, she just, you love to hate her. That's all I'm going to say. Anyhow, so Uhtred tells the king, look, I'm going to help you one more time. And then that's it. I'm done because I've been helping you for like a year already. And all I want from you is to grant me my my property back, you know, because he is a nobleman and he wants his land back and he can get it back with King Alfred's help. But Alfred doesn't want to help him. No, 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 because he likes him too much. He likes having this knowledge and the inside no, like a spy. He likes having that and it gives him the upper hand. So if he lets Uhtred go back to his homeland, then he's not going to have the upper hand anymore. So he's very sneaky, very sneaky and shady. But it's funny because sometimes he's nice and then sometimes he's not. Just like people. He often says, you know what? Okay, you do this last thing for me and I'll grant you your home back. But really, you should really have a wife. Okay, I'm just going to grant you a wife. I'm going to do you a favor. She's beautiful. She's lovely. She's the goddaughter of Otta. He's also a nobleman who is like in the king's court, right? And so he tells... Uhtred, 
look, once you have a wife, you will look more nobleman-ish. Okay, you'll fit the part better. So just go ahead and get married and, and then you can go about your way. So Uchid notices right away, hey, you know what? Why is he giving me such a beautiful wife? Like, why is she for free? Why Why do you want me to marry this girl for? He marries her, obviously, but he starts questioning it, you know? And he's rightfully to do so because sure enough, he took on a huge debt with this girl, okay? So this girl's family owes a lot of money. And so now that Uchid owes a lot of money, well, <laughs> he can't go back to his home because he has to pay this debt off first. He stays with his wife for a while. Seem, things seem to be fine for a bit, but uh, Uchid becomes a bit of a whore. A little bit of a man whore, just, just a little bit. Not a lot, just, just a little bit. And uh, he runs into this pagan queen and he kind of takes a liking to her. And when I say pagan queen, I mean like, you know, Viking kind of queen, right? So him and her, they get along very well. His Saxon wife, Queen Mildred, who's left at home with their son, does not seem to fit his style anymore. Yeah, he leaves her back there, gets this new lady in. And he brings her back with him to Wessex. And the king isn't too happy with this. Alfred is like, uh, where is your real wife? You know, the one that you were married to, you know, you had a son with. Like, wh where is she? <laughs> Tell me, give me the news, you know? You come back, you go off fighting somewhere, you come back with some pagan queen. Like, what's wrong with you, guy? He ends up really upsetting the king at this one point because he does something that's kind of outlawish, okay? And everything he does is outlawish to them. But this one was a little bit, he crossed the line. Um, so what happens when you cross the line? Well, you get in trouble. And uh, you kind of like almost get put to death. But, I mean, the queen was oh too happy to say he needs to pay with his life. He did this and that and that and that. And he did that too. That's it. Off with his head. Like Alice in Wonderland. But the king is like, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to let him fight for himself. I'm going to let him fight to the death with one of my best warriors. The sad thing is that his best warrior is Uhtred's friend. So they're going to start fighting, but lo and behold, the Danes come in and they just take over the whole town. So lucky for Uhtred, these Danes is Breda, right? His brother Ragnar and their whole clan. Well, when they see him, they leave him alone because it's like, okay, we're still kind of siblings, you know, even though we're really not. So I'm not going to harm you, but I'm still ransacking the whole town. Okay, so you got a chance to escape. But we're going to do what we need to do here. So Uchid takes off. And while he's escaping, he has another run-in to where he saves the king. He's constantly saving this king's ass. Constantly. Now the king and the soldiers and Uchid and everybody, they have to leave Wessex because the Danes invaded it all. And they're out there living in like the marsh area. Okay, it's like all water and swampy and stuff like that. They have nowhere else to go. They've been run out of their home. King is in the spot where he's kind of like king of nothing right now. He's just kind of like sitting there in the marsh area, you know, with the weeds and the grass and, and all the water. It's swampy. You get the picture. And he doesn't even realize that half of his men back at the kingdom think that he's dead because they kind of like ran for the hills, okay? The Danes rushed in and everybody rushed out. Being out in the secluded swamp area, there is not much to live on there. I mean, there's there's nothing out there. You know, there's no food. There's no real water besides the, the dirty water that you're, that you're standing in. Nobody wants to drink that. No, you don't want to do that. But his son, who's an infant child, has fallen ill. There's nothing you can really do for him out there in this swamp area. But, here's the but. You know, the queen, the pagan queen that Uhtred decided to kind of just bring along with him and have as his companion. Well, she has some healing powers. Yeah, she has some healing powers. She has some little secrets of her own that she kind of keeps to herself. She's not a bad lady. You know, she's pretty cool. And so Richard says, you know what? She might be able to help. Help your son, Alfred. Do you want her help? And the king accepts the help. His wife, on the other hand, <laughs> Queen Aylesworth, she, she is... Remember I said you love to hate her? Well, you just really do, especially now. Because here Uhtred's trying to save your child's life, right? And she's just over there mouthing off. She's like that teenager that won't shut up. And you want to just backhand them. You know what I'm saying? She gives you those vibes, okay? But yeah, she's like, no, you're not going to take my child and hurt my child. Look, lady, your child is dying, okay? So you be thankful. You, you be thankful. That's all I'm going to say about you. So Uhtred's queen, Isolt, is able to... He healed the infant son of King Alfred. And uh, while they're doing all this, there's some willings and dealings going on 
over back in the Wessex Kingdom. Because remember, the Danes took over, right? Well, guess who was left there? Remember when I said, for lack of a better word, the, the dumbass Ethelwald, he, he couldn't rise to the challenge to be king? Well, Ethelwald wasn't able to escape with everybody else. So he got stuck behind. He's trying to fight for his life over there and he's just making all these claims and that he's still bitter with Alfred because Alfred's the one that, you know, was ended up being king. Well, the Danes take this information and they're like, oh, you have a grudge against him? Well, guess what? So we're gonna give you a sword. Since you hate Alfred so much, go ahead and march yourself to wherever the hell he's at because we know he's alive somewhere because he sure as heck ain't here in Wessex. Go find him, take him out. Once you take him out, we'll all be chill. Okay. Besides that, there is another elderman. The name is Otta. Okay. Not the elder Otta, the younger Otta. Remember when I told you everybody's a junior of a junior of a junior? The elderman Otta is a very true, faithful warrior with King Alfred. Now, his son, younger Otta, is a spiteful, spiteful little thing. And so he's wheeling and dealing as well. He thinks the king is dead. So he's over here talking to some Danes as well. And the Dane that he's talking to is is a pretty a pretty bad one named Scorpa. So now Ada is trying to make some deals with Scorpa by saying, hey, look, uh, I believe the king is dead because none of us have seen him. And he's saying, you know, um, if you agree with me that we can have a truce, everybody can be chill together and there has to be no more bloodshed. And you're welcome in my home. Come and have some food. We'll give you some food and we'll give you some drink. And then you can kind of be on your way, okay? Um, but Ada is kind of sneaky because he really hates Uhtred. He really hates the king as well. And he thinks he deserves to be an elderman. You know, he, he deserves a spot that his father has, right? So there's, like I said, a lot of betrayal, a lot of treachery, and a lot of just not niceness goes on to say the least. He, the king doesn't even know that this is going on. But it's like, look, we just gotta have like one big throwdown, okay? We've gotta get all of our messengers out, send them afar. They're gonna get there as fast as they can because that's how the that's how the show works, okay? Like they get there really fast. And they have to go let all of our best warriors know that we need all the Saxons in the kingdom to come to our aid and fight these Danes off once and for all. Once and for all. We need to have our land back, okay? And Uhtred is thinking, yeah, I feel you, man. I've been trying to do that like the whole entire show, okay? I've been trying to get my land back, but you won't give it to me. I'm getting too passionate about it. But anyway, so Alfred's like, yeah, you know what? We're going to do that. You're going to help me out. Then I'm going to help you out. And everybody's going to be happy. Right? Right. They don't know that Ethelwald is over here planning on trying to kill Alfred behind his back. They don't know that Otta is over there, you know, trying to get together this this deal with this bad Dame Scorpa guy, you know? So there's lots of, they just don't know. Now don't forget how this whole thing started, okay? So remember the very, very beginning, let's go all the way back. I mentioned it a few times, but let's just say it one more time. one Eye Sven, the one that, uh, you know, did what he wanted to do with Ragnar's daughter. And then they came back and ransacked the place and set everything on fire. And that's how this whole thing began. Well, Uhtred, still wants revenge on that. He just wants this war to be over so he can get back to his revenge, get back to his brother and sister, and maybe take over his kingdom that is rightfully his. That's all he wants. That's all. So much to ask. So as everyone marches to this epic battle that is gonna take place, Uhtred has in his mind what he thinks is gonna happen. Alfred, the king, has in his mind what he thinks is going to happen. And the Danes obviously have in their mind what they want to happen. Because, of course, they want to just win it all and take everyone's land for themselves. That's what they do. They're the Danes. What do you think is going to happen? Is Uhtred finally going to get his kingdom back that he so rightfully deserves and have his new queen by his side and then avenge his father that he's been trying to do for the whole entire season? Is that going to happen? Or will Alfred be able to have his Wessex back and create his new England that he's been oh so dying to have? I don't know. I can't tell you because then you won't watch the movie, you guys. That is the show. That is the first season. There's four. And number five is on its way. I don't know when, so don't ask me. It's supposed to be before the end of the year. The end of the year is in two months. I don't know what's going to happen. 
So I hope you like these me flicks series that I got going on. Can't wait to see you guys next time and we'll see what I come up with next. So I hope you like the look, you guys. I mean, what can I say? I tried to do a Vikingish, Danish type of warrior chick girl. Okay, I mean, this this is what we're embodying right now. Just go with it. So uh, have a good one. I love you guys. Treat others the way you want to be treated. As always, be kind. It's free. It's free to be kind. And remember, if you're not kind, there could be Danes waiting for you on the other side. By your car. You never know. Be kind. Love you guys. Have a great night. Bye. This is supposed to be my take on Viking, Dane type of warrior. Did I accomplish that? I hope so. I do. But, you know, they kept it kind of casual. It was like a casual thing, you know? Like, don't catch feelings kind of thing. Do, they, do we still say that? I don't know. I mean, I'll try to do with the uh, the Dane, Viking-ish type of deal, okay? So this is what I came up with. This was This was the thought. There was no thought. I mean, I was just, I was just going. It's six in the morning. That's right, because sometimes we don't know what to watch anymore. So while you're watching me, I'll talk to you about what I watched. Okay, does that make any sense? I hope so, because I don't know what else to say. I'm out, tap out, tag, someone else is in. Someone else, take over. Obviously, would you be happy about that? It's like, you know, a rebel child just causing havoc and stirring the pot. You want to ground them, but you can't because they're too old. I tried to match the movie. I tried. It's October. I went all in. Okay, I mean, like the whole backdrop for the season. It's kind of funny. It's funny how things play. Well, that's why good directors, you know, direct and make movies because it makes sense. So yeah, we're getting off. We're getting off topic. I do that constantly. I turn a small video into 14 hours. I think that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I say that a lot for saying that's all I'm going to say. So yeah, he kind of becomes a bit of a whore. Just, just, just a little bit. Not a lot, just, just a little bit. Can you be a little bit of a whore? Yes. You'll see when you watch it. They start marching themselves. They send out some troops. And you kind of wonder, how does all this happen so fast? You know, there's no cars, right? There's no cars. There's no planes. There's, it's just a lot of land and horses and walking, right? There's just a lot of horses and then walking. How do you get things done in the amount of time that it takes to get it done? a movie i know i'm taking it very literally but anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below that's where the comments go mm -hmm. let me know how you feel oh, lord utrid says you know what okay we're going to battle like you just you just killed my eldest son he probably shouldn't have picked a fight i mean he told him don't fight with him like why did he say anything he should have just went and spied and i don't know i'm going down a different different path that's not what happened so let's just get over it It's like a it's like a pigtail. It's like a like a little piglet. What it what it doesn't it doesn't go with the look. That's all I'm saying. So I can't wait. There's four seasons already. Season five is coming up. Obviously, if I said there was four seasons already. It's late. I've been doing this for five hours. What do you want from me? Oh co-actor. What what is it called? I don't know what the hell it's called. If I did, I wouldn't be sitting here struggling. <sighs> Give me a minute. Now young nine-year-old Uhtred, okay? Not Osbert anymore. His name's Uhtred, keep up. They keeping up? Okay. Uhtred, son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Brother of Uhtred. No one has their own name anymore. Everybody's, everybody's fucking Uhtred, okay?